Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, uh, we're going to be sharing you, with you guys uh, some things that we sent in to CAC. Uh, what CAC, what didn't CAC, uh, you're going to figure it all out in this video. Stay tuned and enjoy. So we made a video about a week and a half ago uh, sharing with you guys what we wanted to send to CAC. Um, and we had some predictions on certain coins that would and certain coins that wouldn't. Um, and like we said, we want to try to start sending more coins to CAC because they're just more desirable, especially for personal collections. Um, and just, you know, a lot of collectors only want to buy CAC coins. Some want to buy just coins in general to fill holes or um, they just really like the coin in general. It doesn't really need to have that sticker. Uh, but there also is a crowd that really like the CAC sticker. So let me show you guys these coins real quick. Um, you'll enjoy them just because uh, some of them are from our personal collection, some of them for Casey's uh, personal collection, uh, a few from Trent as well, and a few from Tylon. I'll include uh, a little bit about them down below if you guys want to go check them out on Instagram or check Tylon's uh, channel out on YouTube. But let's take a look at these. All right, let's start out with the biggest coin of the batch here. This is a 1922 Denver. Uh, Peace Dollar Grid MS66 Plus by PCGS. Um, we thought this one had a shot at CAC. Um, you know, it's it's a, a decent coin, has some toning on it. I don't think that toning, uh, I think it took away from the luster uh, for me personally. Uh, Casey has a different opinion on it, but uh, I think John agreed with me in terms of its luster. Uh, a lot of the 67s that you will see in terms of sold comps have incredible luster, um, but this one, you know, it sat it in CAC, but we'll see. Maybe uh, we'll send it into PCGS uh, with a walkthrough. It might 67, it might not. Um, but like I said, we got it for 4,900 bucks, and a lot of them, uh, you know, are selling anywhere between uh, 7,400, which wasn't CAC, 7,700, which was CAC, and 8,700, which was CAC at PCGS. Um, just just looking at uh, recent comps, so it's kind of a no-brainer. We might just take uh, take it this one all the way to PCGS. Hopefully that one does well. Um, here's another one that we got back. This one uh, we found at a coin show for 182 bucks. Um, we cracked it out because we thought it would get like a 63 plus, 64. It came back a 62, so I guess the color bump didn't really help it um, in terms of grading. But John thought it was nice, uh, cream of the crop, for a 62 grade. and wanted to send it to CAC just in case we wanted to uh, go for that 63 again. Uh, we don't have too much money in this coin, so uh, you know if we really wanted to get that 63 back, we probably could. Just would need a, a reconsideration, um, but nice toned coin. Uh, reverse is, uh, you know, a little hazy, but still a really beautiful coin. Very happy we picked this one up uh, when we did. Um, here's another big kahuna of the batch. Didn't CAC, 1944S, uh, graded MS66 Plus by uh, PCGS. And a little bit of an older holder here. The reason why I thought it wouldn't CAC is because you see those, it's kind of like a coin roll right uh, you know right to the to the right of that uh, right of her I don't know it's like three little dots that you can see just right there I thought that took away from the coin in terms of going 67 uh, or getting a CAC sticker uh, but we got this one for an extremely affordable price uh, we might give it a shot uh, it's just we don't know if it's in the books yet but uh, yeah are you guys enjoying today's video so far if you are please leave a like uh, it really helps us out reaches more numismatists uh, comment your thoughts down below of what you think of the video so far, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, not sure if we're going to hit 2,000 this video or the next, so uh, make sure to subscribe down below. You could be the 2,000th subscriber on our channel. It would be a great milestone to hit, but let's get back to today's video. It's okay if John doesn't agree with all these. Sometimes uh, PC Jess will agree with us, and sometimes John won't agree with us with the CAC sticker. So, um, you know, if you don't have too much into a coin, it's a no-brainer sometimes just to send it back in um, and see if they will give it that grade bump. Um, here's one for my personal collection. This is a 1925S 
California commemorative graded MS-65 uh, by PCGS. Uh, I really enjoy that rainbow just overarching uh, the prospector here. Um, I'm sad that he didn't cack this one, but I think the reason why he didn't cack it is because there's like a light scratch. You can see that just to the left of 1925. That was a major concern for me. Um, the luster, I think, is really on point. Uh, but this one has a little bit more of iridescent toning. So uh, when you're looking at it, you know, iridescent toning would be considered, you know, if I'm looking at it face on, it really looks dark. But then when I kind of get it up in the light, um, you can kind of see a little bit more of the rainbow peeking through. And so sometimes that just not is just not as appealing for most people. Um, but I really do like the coin. I thought the luster was gem state. I thought it was a cream of the crop coin, but it, it's sad to see. Not going to sell this one either way, but I really would have liked a CAC sticker on it. Um, here is a coin, which is probably the best news of the submission. This is an 1888 uh, Morgan dollar, great MS-63 by PCGS. I told Casey when we were going to send this coin off that um, it would gold CAC. Just because, I mean, I think this coin is either you know a 65 or a 66 all day long. And look at that clean cheek. The fields are really nice as well. Um, you know, and a gold cac on you know on a Morgan is kind of tough sometimes. So I'm um, getting you know toning the rattler, the cac sticker, everything on this coin is just in incredible. Uh, we paid 125 dollars on eBay for this coin with crappy pictures, um, and sometimes you just got to take that risk. So you know, I didn't think the toning would look this nice in person. But then when we got it in, you know, we were like, wow, this is incredible. But say the toning didn't look as incredible. Um, you could just send it back for $5. You know, you could just return it. It just wasn't something that you, you know, the pictures weren't good, yada, yada, yada. So the, there's kind of that trade-off. You know, you spend $5 to send it back or you get the coin in hand and it's incredible like this. So, you know, about $140 all in. Um, I would say this coin is anywhere between uh, $12 to $1,500 now just because the gold cac, the toning and the rattler. So, you know, take risks on eBay. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And so that's just something that we, you know, made out on, but. Hey guys, we're taking a second break in today's video to thank all of our loyal uh, clients, customers. Uh, very thankful for all that they do. They're making our dreams possible um, and we couldn't be more excited about it. So I uh, don't want to take up any more of your time. Let's get back to today's video. Uh, but if you guys do want to uh, support us in any way, uh, watching this video, liking this video, like we were talking about earlier, and also uh, maybe helping on the website, seeing what you guys could pick up for your collection. But enjoy the rest of today's video. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, this Buffalo Nickel right here. Uh, the story with this one is that, you know, we, we wanted to take a look at this guy's coins behind his, uh, his case at Grapevine. Um, you know, and he was kind of being a little spotty with me. He didn't really know what to think of me. So I picked up a bunch of commemorators from his case because they were, pretty, uh, they were priced pretty well, pretty competitive. And so then I said, hey, can I keep adding more coins? I want to see what's behind uh, your case. And he grabbed all these coin boxes out. Um, these, uh, the one that I'm showing you now, and the next one that I show you is the one that he pulled out. Um, I bought all of these as soon as I saw them. He paid, made me pay like five or 10 bucks over gray sheet just because of the color. But, you know, 1937 MS66 now has a CAC sticker. I mean, I think this one was a no brainer for a CAC sticker and I'm very happy about that. Um, and I'm kind of to you know, tossed up between this one and this one as my favorite. Um, this one is a 1937D, um, graded MS65 by NGC. Uh, the reason why I like this one a little bit more is because it has some different colors. You know, you see that brown, that blue, and that red. Um, you know, I just like the eye appeal that they both have as well. Luster is incredible. Um, but when I flip over this coin, the reason why I think it wouldn't have cacked is because you see that really big graze on the, on the, uh, the leg of the buffalo. That for me was a red flag, but I'm, you know, I think that, you know, John thought it was a beautiful coin and it barely made the cut. But like I said, whoever was grading that day um, really did well. These are both from the same exact submission. Um, so uh, and whoever sent these coins in as well really knew what they were picking up uh, when they bought them raw. This is a 1929 uh, SLQ grade AU58 full head by PCGS. I wanted to get this one in um, an AU58 plus full head holder. So when I can put the CAC sticker on it, um, it's really gonna help, I think, with the reconsideration. I think the Luster's mint state, uh, but I think it got net graded down for a hit on the reverse. Uh, but when we take a look at that, you see a little bit of circulation below the eagle there, uh, but you can also see uh, like a scratch right, let me see if I can grab it real quick. 
um, a scratch just right down by the quarter. I'll put an image of a true view on that, but uh, pretty nice coin. Let's see how this one uh, fares out. Uh, but let me show you a few of the other coins that we submitted for other people. So here is a coin that uh, is re I thought was really nice. Um, I'm not really a fan of that yellow toning. I don't think John was either. Um, it just kind of took away from its eye appeal. Um, I guess he's just not a fan of toning, especially with the higher grades. Kind of like when we were talking about this 22D here. He wants more luster than he wants toning. I don't know. I think that's just my opinion uh, for John. But... This one didn't cack. If it did cack, it would be, you know, it'd be a pricey coin. Uh, it would add a little bit of value to it. Uh, but Ikes are hard to cack, as we talked about in a previous cack video. If you guys want to check that one out, I have it right here, the top right of your screen. Um, barbers are a little bit tougher as well, as you can see. Uh, we had Trent send in six barbers, a nice dealer of ours. Um, he sent in six barbers, only two of them cacked. Um, and we sent this one in for Tylon. Didn't cack as well, but let me pick these up. Show you guys, um, you know, he, Trent was holding on to these for a long time. He thought they were pretty original. And I had an opinion that only two or three would really cack at the end of the day. Um, and it ended up panning out pretty well. I wish that more cacked for him just because, you know, when you send stuff to cack, you're just waiting for uh, that response. I know it doesn't cost you anything if they don't cack, but you still have stuff in the mail. You're still waiting on them to get back. Uh, but this one's really original. Uh, I like the little bit of color in, in, on In God We Trust. You know, it's a pretty common date, but AU Barbers, uh, with, with this much originality, really does uh, make a collector that likes Barbers uh, mouth water. Uh, here's a 1907D, uh, graded VF35 uh, by NGC. I don't know, I don't think VF35 really you know puts this grade or puts this coin uh, in terms of accuracy. I think this coin would be an XF40 possibly. And I think John agreed, and that's why he added the CAC sticker there. Um, I don't think it's an XF45, but I do think it's kind of an XF40 coin. You know, the it just has strong details on the coin. I do think something's happened to it on the obverse. You know, maybe it was dipped or something like that, but you know, still pretty nice original coin. Very happy for Trent on those two. Now let's talk a little bit more about the other ones that he sent in. This one is a 1910 Barber Dime, graded uh, Proof 64 by PCGS. And the main concern with this coin was really the toning. It took away from the attractability of, of kind of the coin itself. It was graded Proof 64, but I do think that if the toning was a little bit more lighter, it had a little bit more of a cameo contrast, I do think this coin could have cacked. But it didn't have a shot, sadly. Um, it didn't pass. Uh, still a nice coin. Interesting toning on it. And sometimes you want that with Barber Proofs, just to give it a little bit of flair to your collection. Here's one that we sent in for Tylon. Uh, Tylon's a pretty cool guy. Tyler, he, he has sold me a bunch of coins. Um, this, this coin itself, though, gave me a little bit of a red flag on the reverse, just because the toning's there, but like I said, it's kind of iridescent. It doesn't really add um, the value that I would think for a coin. Uh, I think that the toning's just a little bit too dark for me in terms of its eye appeal. And John kind of agreed with me there. The luster on the reverse, though, is pretty nice. So, still a beautiful coin. Didn't cack, but it was worth giving it a shot anyway. And let's show you guys the last three barbers of the video. And maybe try to spot out why they didn't cack. Um, so, we're looking through this one right here. Um, I think this one might have had old cleaning. I'm not too sure. Um, still a nice barber. Um, it has a little bit of darkness on the reverse here. But the you know the cartwheel on the reverse is actually still pretty nice, so not not too bad of a coin. A little bit of a nicer date as well. Here is another one that we uh, we kind of liked. This one is just really problem-free surfaces, very wholesome coin. It is a little bit dark. And it's kind of like a little baked look to it in the stars, and that might have been of old cleaning. It's just kind of strange uh, what people did to coins back then. Um, or, you know, maybe the grade just didn't measure up. Maybe this one just wasn't the cream of the crop for the XF45s. So, you know, we got to trust John sometimes in what he thinks. I still think they're beautiful coins, but if you're wanting to collect CAC coins, you're going to want, uh, you know, maybe to make an upgrade, uh, fill in another hole and sell the other one. But uh, last coin of the video, 1907, Barber Quarter, graded XF40. I think this one had a shot, really. Uh, it has some nice toning on the rim there. Um, I don't really see too many problems with the coin. 
Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Very happy, though, with the submission itself. Uh, you know, kind of disappointed on the bigger coins here and the one in my collection, but very happy for Casey. Very happy about these Buffaloes. And overall, we learned a lot. What is John like? What is John not like? And what eye appeal should we be looking out for? And also, you know, trying to study more about, you know, hits on a coin or toning on a coin. So we hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video so far. Let's roll to the outro. So Drew with Akusha Collectibles, what do you think this channel means to people? How does it help people through their week? Um, give us your thoughts on how this information uh, affects people's lives. Well, I think it's a twofold type of, type of thing, right? So there's certain things that you know. Once we're done with work, once we're done with you know the chores around the house, we want to you know sit back, enjoy our hobby in different ways, and some of that is taking a look at coins in person but also taking a look at what other people are getting in, in terms of uh, other dealers and stuff. Um, but I think also what it means is just that we're all connected um, in, in certain ways, either if we're at a show together, um, if we meet each other in person, maybe at the supermarket, maybe we meet each other at a shop, or we meet each other at a show. Um, just being connected uh, to people that are like-minded is, is truly incredible. And I think that's what people are kind of drawing themselves to um, on the channel. I think that we have a lot of kindred, uh, you know, kindred spirits in terms of what we like to, uh, you know, collect and enjoy. So that's, that's kind of my answer for that. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything, uh, for the end of the video? Well, I would say is if you guys like the video, uh, hit that like button because it helps us out tremendously. Uh, we are so thankful that everyone who has subscribed so far has subscribed and keeps checking out our videos. It means so much. Uh, we, we don't want to do anything else in this world other than buy nice coins and offer them to you. Um, and comment your thoughts down below. What do you think of the video? What do you think of the past videos? Uh, maybe some video ideas as well. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.